In today's video, I'll be doing an interesting experiment. I'll be comparing the output quality between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 to see if there's a difference in the output quality and how the AI follows instructions if we're using GPT 4 compared to GPT 3.5 specifically for blog post writing. So I've used the playground mode and I've used the same prompts, the same process and everything, but the main difference is that I've used GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K for this first article, which is titled Every Thing you need to know about becoming an AI engineer in 2023 and then I use the same process again same prompts and on this model I use the GPT-4 1106 and the title of this article is everything you need to know about becoming an AI engineer in 2023 so I did the same format as I usually do when generating long-form articles and blog posts if you want to go ahead and take a look at these prompts for yourselves and use it for yourselves I'll leave a link for the prompts in the description below but essentially all I did was I prompted the AI I included some internal links then I generated the outline and then I told the AI to generate the full article in markdown and then I converted the articles from Markdown into HTML for both articles, as you can see. And then I copied over the articles and pasted it onto a Word document. So let's go ahead and analyze these two articles. So this is GPT 3.5. Right off the bat, GPT 3.5 in terms of word count is higher. So GPT 3.5 was able to generate me a 1400 word blog post, while GPT 4 was able to generate me a 1200 word blog post. So right off the bat, I obviously much prefer the higher word count that I get from GPT 3.5. Just in terms of the overall look of the article, GPT 3.5 actually, I would say, gives me a more complete article. And this is GPT 4 Turbo. If I take a look at the article, it is well formatted. I like the bullet points. I like the bolded words. But I would say like some of these specific sections, it's only about one word or sorry, one line or two lines. And it kind of seems a little bit incomplete. I would like to have more content in those sections, right? But in terms of the actual um, content of the article, when you go ahead and read through the two articles, the main difference that I found is that GPT-4 Turbo is able to give us more relevant and more up-to-date information. While the information isn't as much in terms of quantity, I believe the quality of the content is much better when using GPT-4. So I'll leave a link for both of these articles if you actually want to go ahead and read it for yourselves. But I like that GPT-4 is able to write on 2023 information, and that is because the GPT-4 um, Turbo is trained on information um, up to, I believe, April of 2023, while GPT-3 Turbo is strained on information up to 2019. So there definitely is a difference in the knowledge cutoff, and we can see that within these articles. For example, in the GPT-4 Turbo article, we get more relevant and more up-to-date information. For example, they have a section which talks about the job market for AI engineers in 2023. So it kind of talks about the competencies in which you need, the type of salary in which you can get and just overall more data points that's related to 2023 and more relevant to this specific article while i would say that we get more general information for example takes tips for a successful ai engineer challenges and future trends in ai engineering so gpt 3.5 is a little bit more general in my opinion while gpt 4 is a little bit more specific it's a little bit more relevant and it has more relevant data points and information related to 2023 and ai engineering which i believe increases the overall quality of the article while the quantity may be a little bit less than what we get back from GPT 3.5. So again, while the GPT 4 article is a little bit shorter and they can definitely include some more content into these sections, a simple way to get around that is simply telling the AI to expand the article. So you can head over to my prompts and just scroll all the way down to my expansion prompt and you can simply tell the AI to keep the same style, same format, just expand this article and the AI will expand the article, which will solve that problem. You will get a more in-depth article, a more relevant article, but it'll also be a lot longer. Also, if you guys would like to see a full tutorial on how I write the best SEO optimized highest quality articles and blog posts using AI, I highly recommend that you check out my paid course. It goes very in-depth in the strategies that I use on this channel, but I go much more in-depth on the paid course. It's much more sequential as well. So if you are a new beginner, it can walk you through the full process of writing high quality content using AI. So if you want to check out my paid course, I'll leave a link for the paid course with a discount in the description below today's video. So I've ran the first article from GPT 3.5 on originality.ai. And not surprisingly, it is 100% AI, which is fine. In terms of plagiarism, this is what I'm mostly concerned with. It is 0% plagiarized. And then in terms of readability, it is a 40.6, which is actually pretty good. So now let's go ahead and do a new scan 
for the second article from Jupiter 4. So this is the second article from Jupiter 4 Turbo. In terms of AI detection score, it is 0% AI detected. In terms of plagiarism, surprisingly, it is 7% um, plagiarized. But what do you actually go ahead and take a look to see what is plagiarized? It is um, flagging what is an AI engineer as being plagiarized, which is just a H1. So that doesn't make any sense. Machine learning algorithms like this is not plagiarized content. Uh, the only thing that could possibly be plagiarized is the um, data point here. But again, this is something that you're uh, referencing from a different website. So of course, it's going to be plagiarized. So I would say that this is a little bit skewed. I would say that this is a 100% um, original content. If you look at what's actually being deemed as plagiarized, isn't actually plagiarized. So I wouldn't worry too much about this number. In terms of readability, it is 39.5. So it's a little bit less in terms of read readability compared to GPT 3.5 Turbo. So overall, I would say that both of these models do a pretty good job. I got to say, I was surprisingly impressed with GPT 3.5. It was able to give us a much larger article. And the article, as we saw, was 100% plagiarized. Sorry, 100% original. But it was also, but it also had a higher readability score. Of course, you will get more general content. And there's not as much list. It's not as well formatted compared to GPT 4. But if you don't have access to GPT 4, or you just want to pay less for your articles, then GPT 3.5 would be a fairly good option for you. Now, what I recommend, I recommend that you combine both of these methods. You first generate your content using GPT-4 and then use the expansion prompt that I have to expand the article using GPT-3.5. So that means you'll get the best of both worlds. You'll get GPT-4 to set up the article and then GPT-3.5 will kind of continue the article. So you'll get a much more in-depth article, but it'll also be high quality because it'll follow the instructions or the format that we had when using GPT-4 first. So that's a method in which I would use, but this was just a quick experiment to kind of do a comparison between GPT-4 and GPT 3.5. As always, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope that you learned something new. If you did, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.